welcome everyone. We're just glad you're here tonight with us as we come together again on this Lord's Day evening for our gospel service at the People's Church, Newton Abbey. God bless you this evening. Uh, we're just looking to the Lord tonight again, and we know we're in another lockdown, and we just want to be a help at this time and not a hindrance. So we have taken our services online, but we're trusting the Lord through these online services that there'll be a blessing, that people will get help, that people will receive what they need from the Lord. And tonight, we just want to look to him with all of our hearts. We're praying for you, that we're asking the Lord to meet your needs, to be with you, to build you up at this time as well. But we need to look into God's word. And we're going to do that tonight by reading together in Mark chapter 8. And I want to talk about the most precious possession we have. And that's our soul this evening. Hope you realize that the most precious thing about you is your soul. And we need to understand that. We need to cherish that. We need to take heed to that. And our soul's greatest need is salvation. And that's the heart of the gospel. That's the truth of the gospel. And just want to read to you what Jesus said about our soul. Now, there's three points here to do with a treasure, a trade, and a tragedy. It's to do with a treasure, a trade, and a tragedy. All to do with our soul. So let's read Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. And when he had called the people to himself, the Lord Jesus, this is, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And then he says in verse 35, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. That's the word of the Lord tonight. Let's just ask a blessing upon what we have read. Yes, Lord, we just thank you for our time together. You see us tonight, you saw us today, Lord, meeting online, just looking to you again. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in today and for those who are tuning in right now. Lord, we're just excited that you can reach us even through the airwaves. History proves that you've reached people through the airwaves. And we pray tonight that you'll do it and do it again, Lord. Let your word come to us freely. Let it come clearly. And let it have a powerful impact upon our hearts and upon our lives. We ask this, look into you. Look into you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. The preciousness of a soul. The most precious thing we have is our soul. You know, there's been a lot of talk this week about the richest people in the world. And this week, Elon Musk has taken over Jeff Bezos in being the richest man in the world. His stocks, the stocks of Elon Musk has accumulated by 5% and it's taken him to the position of the richest man in the world. Something like $134 billion or, or something like that. But and people are just in awe of that and what that would mean to them. And, and imagine being like that. And, and yet we have to have a reality check. And, and yet we have to take things as they really are. You know, 
if you could have all of that, you could accumulate all of that, you could extend even or, or, or expand in, in all of that, greater than all of that. But at the end, when our life here is drawing to an end, what good would all of that be? What good? Because one thing we know for sure, we can't take it with us. And I think that's what the Lord Jesus was getting at here when he said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You know, I read a long, long time ago about an atheist who wrote a gospel tract. I thought I was imagining things. I thought I'd got it wrong, but it was true. An atheist actually contributed and wrote a gospel, a Christian gospel tract and it read like this it became something that had a powerful meaning in relation to what we're talking about tonight an atheist compiled a gospel tract and here's what he said if i firmly believed as millions say they do that in this life knowledge and faith in the god of the bible influences destiny in another that faith would mean everything to me I would cast away earthly enjoyments as dross. I would cast away earthly cares as follies and earthly thoughts and feelings as vanity. That faith would be my first waking thought and my last image before sleep sank me into unconsciousness. I would labor in its cause alone. I would take no thought for tomorrow, but for eternity alone. I would esteem one soul gained for heaven, worth a lifetime of suffering. Earthly consequences would never trouble my hand. I would strive to look upon eternity alone. I would go forth, he said, to a world that is dying and preach to it in season and out of season. And my tax would be, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And you know, he is right. He is absolutely right. Here was someone who had grasped the reality of what Jesus meant in our reading. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? It's the most precious thing. It's the greatest thing we have. Now, in relation to what the Lord Jesus said here, he was actually asking questions, if you look at it carefully. There's questions that Jesus felt the need to ask here, and there's three in particular. Three questions that the Lord Jesus asks here. Three truths are highlighted here by the questions that Jesus asks here, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And, and, and they come together in these three ways, a treasure that is incomparable, your soul. There's a treasure tonight greater than any other. There's a treasure tonight that cannot be compared to a living soul, your soul. Every one of us has been given, uh, been given a soul by God. It's called a living soul. The only way we could describe it, it's the real you. It's the inside. It's you, the real you, the thing inside that makes you tick. And your soul is unique. And you've got a soul, and it's the most precious thing you've got. The book of Genesis 12 and verse 7 says, The Lord God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And that's you tonight as you're listening to this. No matter what else is going on in your life, you have something, you are something precious and, and it's a living soul. It's yours and, and no one can take it from you. There's a couple of things about our soul that we need to understand. The first is this. It will never die. Your soul will never die. Whether we know it or not or are aware of it or not, we carry about with us something that's so precious, but it, it's so 
so sustainable it will never die it's called the living soul king david said to jonathan in the first book of samuel chapter 20 and verse 3 truly as the lord lives he said and as my soul lives there's something in us that's living and will live after the grave even after our body decays and after we take our last breath on earth the soul is immortal. It can never die. M many things look pleasant and attractive for the moment, but in the light of eternity, they can be perilous in relation to our soul because there's consequences on our soul. There's consequences to do with the things we, we do in life and, and have done in life that have a bearing on our soul. And a lot of things can look pleasant and attractive for the moment, but in the light of eternity, they can have a perilous effect upon our soul. You know, what we sow in life, we'll reap in eternity. The Apostle Paul said this in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And you know, the soul that was in, is in us, the soul that is in us, can never die the body goes into the grave but the soul goes into eternity and in eternity there's only one of two or two places heaven or hell and that's what the word of god affirms that's a truth claim of the word of god and tonight the gospel of jesus christ asks us the solemn question where will our souls spend eternity the person who puts their trust in Jesus has the wonderful assurance that heaven is waiting. You see, it was Jesus himself who said, I go and prepare a place for you. He promised that. He guaranteed that. And it reminds us of our soul that will never, never die. I go and prepare a place for you. Our soul will never die. It's the most precious possession of all because Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Just think about it. The whole world, the whole world, it's priceless jewels, it's riches, it's greatest possessions. The Lord Jesus put all of that on one hand and I'm, your soul on another hand and he said what shall it profit a person if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul do you know it's said to have taken over 20,000 workers a period of 22 years to build the Taj Mahal in India it's the most majestic place one of the most majestic places on earth it's made out of pure white macrana marble it's inlaid with thousands of precious jewels and stones it cannot be estimated in value it is literally priceless and that's only one thing on earth but the lord jesus said what shall a profit a man if he gains the whole earth and the whole world and loses its own his own soul for what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Your soul is the most precious thing of all. Your soul is the most precious thing you have. Forget the riches. Forget about the material possessions. Because when you die, you can't take any of that with you. We've heard it this week. Richest men in the world contending against one another. One taking over another one. In the end, that means nothing. We need something deeper. And we need our soul's salvation. We need our soul's salvation. Now, I was thinking and preparing for this little message tonight, the truth that we need more than a vaccine. I think we're in danger at the minute of getting the mindset, if we can just get this vaccine in the next six weeks or so, or, or two or three months or so, all our problems will be solved. All our, 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 our situations will be uh, altered and, and we'll just get back on with life and, and that'll be wonderful. And, 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 and we'll we say goodbye to sorrow. We'll say goodbye to hardship. We'll say goodbye to tears and death. And, 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 and you know, we forget for a minute that we need more than a vaccine. We need something within. 
We need this something to happen to us with them. Because listen, if COVID-19 doesn't take us from this life, something else will. It's like the story of Lazarus in the Bible in John chapter 11, one of the greatest miracles ever when Lazarus was risen from the dead. And people say, well, that must be the greatest thing of all. That isn't the greatest thing of all. The greatest thing of all is a person's soul salvation. And let me tell you why. Because yes, Lazarus dramatically and purposefully as well to display the power of God in the person of Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And it was a sign and it was for a specific reason in the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. But it wasn't the greatest thing of all. And let me tell you why. Because another day came when Lazarus died. And he wasn't risen back to life again. And it reminds us of the fact that we need something deeper. We need something inside. We need something that's going to go beyond the grave. And we need more than a vaccine tonight, people. Because a vaccine will stay us and stem us maybe for from this COVID-19 for a while. But something else is going to happen to us. We're going to contact something else and we're going to leave this world behind. But our soul is going to go in into eternity. We need something to happen to our soul. And that leads me to something else tonight as well. Not only a treasure that's incomparable, but a trade that is inconceivable, a trade that's inconceivable because Jesus talks about here exchanging your soul, exchanging your soul because he went on to say another question here, what shall a profit a man? Here's another question or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, you can sell your soul, you can exchange it. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That tells us we can sell our soul if we're not careful. Judas Iscariot, for instance, sold his soul for 30 pieces of silver. A man in the Bible called Esau sold his soul for a bowl of lentil soup. He, dis, he, he totally dis, disvalued not only the things of God, but his own soul. And he sold his soul for a bowl of lentil soup. Many today are selling their soul for the sinful pleasures of this world and for the opinion of others. I was walking into a supermarket one day and a guy came walking towards me with a, a t-shirt on, a black t-shirt on and, and all sorts of images upon the black t-shirt but the print was very clear to see he wanted everyone to know the fact he had sold his soul to rock and, rock and roll it said on his t-shirt i sold my soul to rock and roll he wanted everyone to know it i've sold my soul to rock and roll and and listen be not mistaken tonight the lord jesus said what will you give in exchange for your soul it might be your own way we need to get away from this and remove ourselves from this mindset of I did it my way. There's so many funerals when, when that is played. I did it my way. That's not the best way. We can't exchange even our soul for my way and our way. We need God's way. So many are exchanging their, their soul for even the sinful pleasures of this world, the opinion of other people and, and being popular. People just want to be popular. And so they just leave off the things of God or maybe their own selfish, stubborn way in life. But you're giving your soul up. You can exchange your soul if you're not at all careful. Judas Iscariot sold his soul for 30 pieces of silver. Esau sold it, sold it for a, a bowl of lentil soup. Don't let that happen to you. Don't exchange your soul for something because it's more precious than that. And I'll tell you why it is. Because Jesus came for the salvation of your soul. Jesus came to make a way that your soul could be saved. And that even speaks of the value of your soul. And so there's things here to, to, to take on board. A treasure that's incomparable. A trade is, that is inconceivable. But just to finish tonight, a tragedy that is inexcusable. Losing your soul. Losing your soul. 
Listen to what the Lord said again. Among these questions, what shall it profit a man? There's a question. If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. Whatever you do, don't lose your soul. Lose your job. That's one thing. It's a tragedy and people have and, 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 and it's a devastating thing. And we're praying that people get those opportunities back and those jobs back and back in line again sooner rather than later. Lose your dreams. Lose your ambitions. But don't lose your soul. Don't lose your soul. You know, it's strange we have the ability to lose our soul, but we don't have any ability to save it. You have the ability to lose it. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You can lose your soul by neglecting the word of God. You can lose your soul by refraining from walking in the way of salvation that the Lord is reaching out to people like you and I with tonight. You can lose your soul in the end by rejecting that all of the time. Don't do that tonight. Don't lose your soul. And, and yet it's strange we have the ability to lose our soul, but we don't have the ability to save it. Only the Lord can do that. But he's already made the way to do that. Many, many people have died after living their entire lives trying to save their soul by their own merits, by their own achievement, uh, achievements. But in doing that, they have lost it. You see, a person's soul salvation tonight can only be attained through coming just the way you are to the Lord Jesus and receiving his redemption. He died for the salvation of our soul. And that's why we're saying with the utmost respect, we thank God for vaccines. They can help. The word of God says every good and every perfect gift comes from above, comes down from the Father of light. There's good gifts they're not perfect, but they're good and they can do good. And we receive that as such, but we need more than a vaccine in the end. We need something to happen within us. We need something to happen to our soul. Because listen, folks, let's have a reality check tonight. If it's not COVID-19, it's going to be something else. Our hearts are breaking this week for the amount of people in our province who have had cancer operations cancelled, urgent Cancer, cancer operations have had to be cancelled because there's no facility, because the hospitals are overrun with COVID. That's the chaos we're in. That's the extreme situation that we're in. And it's terrible for people. But we need more than a vaccine, folks. We need something within. We need something within. Let me remind you as I close of what King David said in his great, great Psalm 23. And he said a lot in that Psalm, in those short few verses that we have heard many of us from our childhood, but there's a line in it and something that David highlights in it that's so, so relevant to what we're talking about tonight. The Lord, David talked about the Lord being his shepherd, and, and leading him by still waters, green pastures. He talked about dark valleys. He talked about a table being prepared. But then David said this about the Lord. Here's what he said. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. I just want to leave tonight off this message by saying, that's the greatest thing of all. You can have your circumstances restored. And that's one thing. You can have your situation restored and that's another thing. And they're great and they're important in their place. But the greatest thing tonight is this, that he restores your soul. That's something within. That's something eternal. That's something forevermore. We need more than what this world can offer. It will not cut it in the end. It will not make a difference in the end. The wealth, the accumulation of prestige and privilege and popularity, all of that means nothing. We've got a soul that we're going to carry into eternity. And it needs to be saved. And Jesus came for that reason. Jesus came for that purpose. Will you let him do something within you these days? Will you let him come to you within and change you within? 
He restores my soul, David said, not his circumstances. A man came to see me one time and it was late at night and I, I had to go down to the church late at night. And I remember thinking in the car, going down to the church, I hope this is genuine. I hope this is serious because it's late. And I'm coming down here, but I, I need to meet this man. And I met him and he was in tears. He was in bits. And he said to me, I, I, I need help. And I says, well, what do you want? And he began to tell me the whole history of his marriage breakup and the trouble that was being caused. And he had caused the trouble. He had hang-ups and habits and addictions and it was just destructive and it was destroying his marriage. And I listened to him for quite a while. And at the end of the conversation, I said to him, but what do you want? What do you really want? And he says, I want my marriage back. I want to get my marriage back. And I can remember saying to him in that moment, that won't be enough. And he looked at me. He says, well, you ask me what I want. I says, yes, but I'm going to tell you what you need. You need more than your marriage back again. Because there's something within you that's destructive. There's something within you that's crippling. And if you get that marriage back this week, it'll happen again next week. You need something within. You need to let the Lord do something within. A transforming work within. King David said it. He restores my soul. He does something with them. He does something inside us. And that's what we need to see tonight. That's what we all need to see. He didn't say he restores my circumstances. He restores my marriage. I believe all of that comes afterwards. Let him do something with them. Is there someone listening tonight? And, and you know what that means? Is there someone listening tonight? And you know what that means? Will you let the Lord work in you? Will you let him work in you tonight? We're talking about the most precious thing of all. I brought this because of all the, the hurrah and trumpet blowing of the world's richest man has been surpassed by someone else this week and, and, and all of that. And, and I just think there's a danger. People can look at that and say, if I had 138 million or billion even, I, I, my problems would be solved. I would do this. No, listen, there, there's something more precious within you because in the end, all of that will mean nothing. But God loves you tonight with an everlasting love. And he wants to rescue your soul. Can we pray for a minute in the name of Jesus? You know, he's only a prayer away, folks. He's only a prayer away. We believe in just proclaiming the gospel every week here on a Sunday night. We're trying to be faithful in that. I just read to you what Jesus said. It's eternal. It's as relevant now as it ever was before. I remember bringing this message one night or a message on this verse one night in a little gospel hall when I first went to England. It was a little gospel hall and, and that's where we were, a little hall with a handful of people and I just brought out what Jesus said and a, a young man in his early 20s was listening to it and in my office afterwards he cried his way to Jesus. He shook and he was shaking from head to foot under the power of God. And he wept his way to Jesus. And he informed me that he was giving himself to the wrong things. And he didn't want to do it anymore. And he was an educated university graduate. But he wanted to get his life right. And he did that night. Under the word of God. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Can we pray? And if you're listening and if you don't know the Lord in that real life transforming way, will you reach out to him for that to happen to you right now through this prayer even? Let me pray with you. You can repeat the lines. Will you do it from your heart and the Lord will hear you? Let's just pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus and I need you. I need you in my life. I need you to change my life. I need you to save my soul. I believe I need more than what this world can give. I thank you for the good things, but I need you to work in me, a transforming work of your power in my soul. Will you hear my cry? 
Will you forgive my sin? Will you change my life? Will you restore my soul? I give you myself tonight. I present my life to you. Will you take it? Just like you promised to take me in. Will you do it tonight? Give me the strength that I need for each and every day. Fill me with your power until I'm never the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. You know, if there is someone who's prayed that prayer, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to encourage you. Our numbers are coming on the screen in just a moment. But do call us. And brothers and sisters from PCN, do call us. Keep calling us. We know we're just in this lockdown again, but we're there for you. We're back again tomorrow night as usual. Nothing changes tomorrow night. We're back online tomorrow night for the call to prayer. Please be diligent. Please be committed to that. Let's do that with all of our heart. Keep sending us your prayer requests too. Just people are ringing letters, letting us know what's happening. We want to know that. We want to put them on the list. We want to pray for them diligently. And, and not only that, we're there if you need to talk to us. We're there if you need advice, brothers and sisters. We'll, we'll do our best, but we want to be available. Then on Wednesday night, we're back online again this week and for our Bible study. But we're trusting the Lord that he'll use that. Do tune back again on Wednesday. But the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may you know his peace this week. In the name of Jesus. Amen.